G'day everyone, this is Jackson Milan, the Wealth Mentor, and I am here alone for another episode of the Ask Aureus Anything live Q&A, uh, where I answer your questions and deliver some value to you. Now, a little bit of backstory, uh, Sam's sick, sick, Gary has better things to do with his life, uh, so I'm here all by my lonesome, and uh, I'm going to be doing my very best to wing this episode and uh, deliver a ton of value to those of you who choose to join. So uh, a little bit of background, uh, the Ask Aureus Anything live Q&A is a weekly event that goes live at 5.30 every Friday on the Aureus Financial fan page. And it's a really good opportunity for you to get those things off your chest that you've been thinking about throughout the week. Uh, whether it be some things about business, whether it be about wealth, finance, uh, lending, cash flow, uh, achieving your lifestyle and financial goals, whatever it may be, this is a great opportunity for you to voice them, get them out into the world and chase some value from us experts uh, who are doing this every single day. So uh, I am going to be doing my very best to uh, not have a conversation with myself and uh, I really need your assistance with this to ensure that we have a two-way dialogue and uh, I'm not here uh, depressed uh, on my lonesome. And I can see that Sam and Gary have been nice enough to join for a little bit of moral support. Sal as well. G'day, Sal. I uh, appreciate your, uh, your, uh, your, your presence, uh, if not in person, uh, virtually through this live event. So uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this evening. It's actually going to be a little bit uh, exciting. I don't have to deal with the likes of uh, Sam, Sal or Gary. Um, and uh, I can just do things my way, which is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've actually created some, uh, some amazing tips of value. I literally put this together about three minutes ago and uh, I'm going to be going through a little bit of a web event with you guys. Uh, I want to deliver some more value. I want to go through some topics that we haven't really uh, delved into a whole lot uh, in our content uh, and hopefully lay the foundation for what is to come. Uh, we've been taking your feedback. Uh, we've been really trying to work hard to create some great content that can give you value, help you on your wealth journey, and uh, really support you in kicking some goals. So uh, I really hope you enjoy it. Beyond this, if you do have questions, please do feel free to chuck them in the comments. Uh, I don't want to see uh, virtual tumbleweeds uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. So uh, please get involved. If you don't want to get involved, if you're too shy, uh, if you're too scared, uh, then please do like and share uh, so we can get this in front of more people. So that would be fantastic. Uh, so you can all see my bearded face. So we're going to dive right in. A little bit of an agenda. We're going to talk about the million dollar mindset. Uh, this is something that I refer to a lot. I've spoken about it in my book and it's something that's coming up more and more with my coaching clients that I've been working with. Uh, ultimately, this is where there can be the most value obtained. Uh, so we're going to talk about some concepts around that. We're going to be talking around the difference between dreams and goals. Um, this is actually something that I've been working with my team in our one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to help them understand the difference between the two. We're going to be talking around cash flow being the cornerstone of your ability to achieving your financial or lifestyle goals. And I guess most people tend to look towards the sexy and sophisticated stuff and don't focus on the, uh, the, the meat and potatoes stuff. So we're going to go through that and share some really valuable tips. We're going to be going through the obstacle is the way. Uh, those of you who, uh, who know, I'm a big fan of Ryan Holiday, uh, who wrote a book under the same title and I'm going to be sharing some tips with you around persevering in spite of the obstacles that life throws at you. We're going to be uh, announcing a couple of really cool partnerships that we've been working on behind the scenes uh, which is going to be fantastic so I hope you can stick around the whole time uh, for everything that I've got to ramble about uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. So while we're waiting for questions I am going to dive right in. So starting with the million dollar mindset. Now, for many of the clients that we work with, uh, being busy professionals and business owners, uh, we understand that most people set out on their wealth journey with uh, great ambitions. I'm sure if you think back to the days where you started your business or you were just getting started in your career, uh, you were uh, wide-eyed and excited about all of the things that you were going to achieve in the world. Uh, the multi-million dollar business you were going to create, the lives you were going to be able to impact, uh, the wealth you were going to be able to obtain, the lifestyle you'd be able to provide to your family. 
And ultimately, life has a way of beating our way at us and wearing us down to a point where we accept the status quo. Uh, for those of you who are watching, if you, uh, if, if you can relate to this, please comment uh, so I can see the love and uh, see that you're actually uh, relating to this. I know for myself, uh, this is something that's happened through various iterations and with, with a number of clients that I've worked with uh, and in our business as well, is that we've started out with a great vision and ultimately there's always been things that have been thrown up. Now, what this comes down to is the million dollar mindset. This isn't about the mindset that you need to make a million dollars. This is about the valuable mindset that you require in order to persevere uh, in spite of what life throws at you. So. What we need to do is we need to understand how do we create a million dollar mindset. And we start with understanding the concept that mind, the mind is a muscle. Um, the analogy that I always like to use is imagine if you went to the gym and you haven't trained for years. Uh, I can attest to this. Uh, I haven't been to the gym in a very long time. And you go up to the squat rack, you pack the bar with 200 kilos of weights and you go to, to squat the, the 200 kilos. What do you think is gonna happen? you're probably gonna drop the weight, you might hurt yourself, uh, you're gonna bruise your ego, people around you might laugh at you. Uh, it's ultimately uh, going to uh, have some level of impact. And we apply the same analogy and the same kind of uh, perspective when we approach our own professional business, lifestyle and financial goals. Most of us set the bar so high that uh, we set this un unrealistic pressure on ourselves without having have tested our mindset uh, and our ability to actually turn that into a reality. So when we're approaching our goals, when we're approaching crafting a mindset, we need to basically exercise the muscle. We need to get it working for us. Uh, I'll share with you uh, my own experience. Uh, I've, I've had a long history, a family history of alcoholism. Uh, there was plenty and plenty of people in my family who've suffered from alcoholism, uh, passed away from, uh, from cirrhosis of the liver, uh, all of these types of things that plague uh, alcoholics. And for a very long time, even though I was very young, I always said to myself that, that I'm not going to be uh, a statistic uh, in the history of my family uh, and I, I, I don't have a problem. And it took me a long while, although it never affected me uh, in a, a real and obvious way that other people could see, uh, I got to a point where I did essentially have a, a crossroads. I had to make a decision. And the ultimate decision that was, am I going to put my 100% into my business and into my pursuits and ambitions, or, I'm gonna, or am I gonna keep drinking? And ultimately I decided that three years ago, I was going to stop drinking completely. At the time I said I was gonna do it for 12 months, uh, but by the time I got to about three months in, I ultimately decided that I needed to prove it to myself that I could do it for longer. And since then, it's been over three years uh, where I haven't drank uh, and I have no intention of ever drinking again. Uh, those of you who, uh, who may have uh, observed me drinking, I was very obnoxious uh, and uh, ultimately, uh, I was going to fall into the same trap uh, that had plagued my family for, for generations. So what this illustrates is that you need to test your mindset. You need to put your mind to something, even something small. You start with something very, very small. Um, for example, when you set an alarm, get up the first time it goes off in the morning. Uh, if you say you're going to do something like going to the gym, make sure you do it. If you say you're going to do a date night once a week with your partner, make sure you commit. And it's little things over time that tests your mindset and it proves and sets a precedent for your ability to do what you say. And this has been a defining characteristic for the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. The most successful people in the world have been people who haven't necessarily had the greatest ideas, but have had the greatest execution of those ideas. And it's with this underlying principle that we can teach ourselves to be, I guess, people who are able to attain greatness. This is something that's worked for me, something that I've tried to teach my clients uh, and has had profound results in the lives of the people that we've worked with. So if any of you who are watching, if you've got any, uh, any questions about mindset, feel free to post them up. More than happy to, to share some further insights. But this is really the most important part. Now, let me give you some depth. And this is going to be a really good segue into the next section. The idea of having a mindset comes down to the deference of gratification in many circumstances, particularly when we're talking about money. The idea is that we need to be willing to defer gratification from today 
in pursuit of a heightened gratification as a result of our sacrifice at some point in the future. I'm sure all of you who've read my book uh, or have listened to some of our content in the past, you hear me constantly referring back to the marshmallow experiment uh, where they basically put kids in a room for 15 minutes with a marshmallow. And they said, if you can wait uh, for the 15 minutes and you don't eat the marshmallow, I'll give you a second marshmallow. And majority of the children, two out of three, were unable to wait that period of time. They were able to wait one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 14 minutes, 14 minutes and 50 seconds. But at some point, two out of three, without fail, ate the marshmallow. And one out of three was able to persevere, was able to push through that kind of pain and be able to achieve the gratification of getting the second marshmallow at the end. Now, this is a great analogy for life. Most of us don't have the ability to not eat the marshmallow. Uh, we constantly want everything now. We've been conditioned through society, through technology, uh, through marketing to always get everything now. Even worse, there's things like Afterpay that are allowing us not only just to get things now, but get things now when we can't afford it. So this is only making it more difficult for us to train our mindset to be successful when it comes to committing to our goals, particularly when those goals are long-term. So we're gonna talk about this in a bit of detail. Now, the next point was around turning dreams, uh, or the difference between dreams and goals. Uh, when we think of a dream, and majority of people are dreamers, uh, we always have some, some blind ambition, something that, that we would ideally desire, uh, we dream for, we'd like to win the lottery. Uh, we'd like to, to have a, 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 essentially an abundance of wealth to achieve financial freedom. We'd like to have a, 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 a house on the water. Uh, we'd like to drive a Ferrari. Uh, whatever it may be, majority of cases, we always refer to these things as dreams. And the main reason that, uh, that we, they are dreams is that there is no tangible uh, or, I guess, step-by-step -step roadmap for you to achieve those things. They are essentially just things that you have ideally wanted at some point, but you haven't the hard work to actually break down how you're going to get there. Now, a difference between a goal is a goal is something that you have defined, a roadmap that is going to provide you with the ability to turn that into reality. And that is a, an art in itself, of being able to turn dreams into goals. Because I think a lot of us have the definition wrong. We believe that we can uh, aspire to create that multi-million dollar company. We, we dream that we can achieve that, that role of being uh, on the executive board uh, or, or essentially curing world hunger, um, of creating peace in the Middle East. But we haven't put in the effort and the time and the energy to be able to turn that dream into a goal. So we need to create a framework that allows you to do it. And we're gonna talk about that now. It's very, very simple. Our methodology around this is about understanding where you are now and sometimes the harsh reality of where you are now, you need to be honest about it, defining what you want and what is the destination and being able to work out the gap. Now, in some cases, that's much easier than, than others. I was speaking to a client today uh, who completed an exercise uh, that I take all of our clients through that's built around three questions. Now, if you're watching this, I'd like you to grab a pen and I want you to write down these three questions. And when you get a bit of peace and quiet, uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I want you to ask yourself the questions and write down your responses. So question number one is, what is fundamentally important to you? Question number two is assuming that your fundamental needs have been met, what then becomes your goals, dreams and aspirations? And question number three is, what is the significance of these goals, dreams and aspirations to you? Now, when we went through this exercise and he did it in a, a, a Word document, sent it to me in an email, and he basically said, look, Jackson, I've got clear of what I want, but I don't know how to turn these dreams into goals. Um, so some of them were being able to be in a position to buy a nice house, uh, be able to support his family, uh, four kids, uh, be in a position to give back to his parents, to allow them to have the freedom to retire. Uh, and then some of them were, were much bigger ambitions, which will park for the time being. Now, those three things are relatively easy to, to, to define. The first one in terms of the, the house. My instruction to him was, well, go into domain or realestate.com.au, 
and go and find the house that you can see yourself living in for the, for the rest of your life. Uh, it may not necessarily be the dream home, the, 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 the waterfront uh, uh, mansion uh, with the, the circular driveway where you can park your Lamborghini, but it is the family home. It is the place that you would be comfortable living in for the rest of your life. And find out what the value of that property is today. Is it $1 million? Is it $1.5 million? Whatever the number may be, it's ultimately up to you to find out. Now, firstly, the next thing we need to do is, is once we've got that, we then make an appointment to go see it. We essentially immerse ourselves in turning this into reality. It makes it real because you've gone to the property, you've looked in it, you understand where everything is. Um, you know, if you go into the bathroom, what the water pressure is like, uh, you know what the, the, the backyard looks like, um, you know what the maintenance that is going to be required. You're understanding those little details that are going to be in your vision for every single day in pursuit of that goal. Because without that, it makes it very, very difficult to defer gratification. Now, what we're then gonna do is once we've got a dollar figure, then we can reverse engineer that. So what is the minimum amount of money that we would need as a deposit to buy that property? Uh, is the bank going to require us to put a 20% deposit plus stamp duty? Or are we happy to pay lenders mortgage insurance and essentially uh, then, uh, and then essentially, uh, essentially scrape in with a 10% deposit plus stamp duty? Do we have family that have a property that could do a family guarantee? And also how much income do we need to show to be able to service that mortgage? So what this now tells us, how much cash do we have to have in the bank to make it possible? And what is the amount of income I need to have each and every single year to be able to borrow the money from the bank? Now we've turned that from a dream to a goal. The second part of supporting his family. Well, okay, uh, his family hadn't happened yet. It was more or so an ambition getting to a point where we could have a family with four kids. So I said, first things first is do a personal profit and loss that collates all of your income and expenses today. Then save a second version called family and then input all of the additional expenses that are gonna be there when you've got four kids running around. Uh, you've got school fees, you've got uniforms, uh, you've got uh, going out on the weekends, uh, trips away, all of these things. Put them in there and essentially see, once again, how much income you require to make that happen. Now, even go as far that in that previous scenario where you've spoken to a mortgage broker, hopefully, uh, or your bank, about your borrowing capacity and how much you need in order to get that loan, ask them what the impact would be if you had four dependents. And you're starting to see that you can start to bring these numbers to life. They're making them real. And this is what most people get wrong when they approach their wealth or their income in business or in life uh, through their career. They say, hey, I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to work for that promotion. That promotion is going to make me this much money. And then I'm going to use that money for X. This is the wrong way to approach it. The best way to approach it is to say, these are my goals. These are all the things that are important to me. This is how much those goals are going to cost. This is how, uh, how much I need to earn to make those goals a reality. And this is the actions that I need to take to make that much money. How much more powerful is that? So this is the shift in mindset, the shift in your, your behavior and the way that you approach your goals that will ultimately help you transition your, your dreams to goals. And now once you have this action plan, you now have an objective framework for you to make decisions that will ultimately guide you in pursuit of what you want. So hopefully that's valuable. So if any of you do have any questions about, uh, about mindset, about dreams or goals, about how to, to break these things down, please feel free to, to chuck them in, in the comments uh, and I'll get to them uh, as we go. In any case, uh, so I don't sit here with, uh, with uh, virtual tumbleweeds rolling past, uh, I will keep going. Now, the next part is the cash flow is the cornerstone of all of your future planning. Now, the important thing is that most people don't think that cash flow is that sexy, and I agree with you. Uh, the last thing that you want to be doing uh, is sitting down on a Wednesday night and completing a budget. I think that for a very long time, and I don't know where it started, people have this negative perception and this, this, this really, uh, I guess, this, this understanding of budgeting as being a bad thing. Most people, when asked, when they think about budgeting, they think of spreadsheets, they think of crunching all of their numbers, flicking through bank account statements, uh, setting unrealistic expectations for yourself, taking all the joy out of life, 
and then beating yourself up when you don't stick the course. This is not the way that you should approach budgeting because at a base level, before you even started, you failed. So we wanna try and maximize your opportunity for success. And what that means is you need to redefine the relationship that you have with the word budget. And this is the reason why we use the term personal profit and loss. The idea of a personal profit and loss is much like a business. It's about understanding your incomings and your outgoings and how much you require in order to keep things afloat and therefore how much is left over. This is about you defining what it costs for you to live the life that you desire. And as a result of the incomings and outgoings, typically how much should be left over at the end of the month for you to be able to plan with. So for those of you who essentially have, have not done this exercise before, we have a really great uh, tool that you can get access to. Uh, we'll be sharing that in our community shortly, uh, which uh, is the, the Wealth Mentor community. For those of you who aren't members yet, search for it on Facebook and join. It's a free community where we share lots of valuable insights. And we'll be posting up our tool that we use for personal profit and loss planning, along with some walkthroughs to teach you how to use it. The aim is that this is only going to be done uh, once off or once every uh, certain amount of time, whether it be every six months or 12 months. It is unrealistic to think in this day and age with everyone being so busy, you and I included, uh, that we're gonna be able to fill in this spreadsheet every single week or every single month. But in saying that, if we don't have access to the data on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, then what use is it? So we need to leverage technology. And another really valuable initiative that we're going to be announcing to the community uh, over the next couple of days is providing you all with free access to our wealth management dashboard called My Prosperity. This is something that's only going to be for community members. And this is going to be a really way that we can help you enhance your wealth journey, get access to the right technology that can support you with automating all of this stuff and save you the time and hassle of having to update your budget and beat yourself up every month. So this is something that we're going to be talking through shortly. All right, so if you've got any questions about cash flow, feel free to let me know. But cash flow comes down to three key components, and most people get this wrong. Cash flow comes down to having the right structure, having the right oversight, and having the right behavior. Now, if we break this down, having the right structure in terms of the accounts that you use. Uh, for some of my clients who, uh, who don't like to use uh, lots of accounts, we use envelopes. Uh, but majority of the time, uh, we want to have bank accounts. And it's about having a structure that allows you to segment and have your buckets that have each an individual purpose to give you structure. This is 80% of the battle. If you have the right structure, you're nearly all the way there. Now, the next thing is having the right oversight. This is about being able to monitor the actual versus your budget. And this is where the technology comes into play. Having the right oversight is 10% of the battle. And ultimately it gives you the ability to fine tune your structure and also fine tune your behavior to get a better outcome. Leaving finally, the last 10% is your behavior. We need to understand that similar to mindset, this is something that has been hardwired over decades. We've inherited it from our parents, from our upbringing, from our experience. And ultimately we can't expect to change these behaviors overnight. The structure that I created for Aureus that we use for all of our clients is something that I created to be able to protect myself from myself. Uh, those of you who have read my book know that I've created seven spender types. And uh, personally, I've spoken about this on, on live TV, that the spender types that I am is that I am a little bit of a cash splasher and a cash makes me happier, meaning that I do enjoy a little bit of retail therapy here and there. Uh, more so these days, it is uh, vintage motorcycle parts for uh, my ever uh, broken down Harleys. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I, that's what I, I like to spend on. Now, by having this structure, it allows me to minute, uh, limit the means that I have available to spend in these areas, meaning that I, I live to the means I have available and I commit to a fixed amount of savings or surplus to allow me to achieve my goals. So if you want more insights around these structures, we're going to be creating a video series that's going to be released in the community over the coming weeks uh, to essentially provide you guys with that education, with the ability to implement these strategies that we typically charge uh, our private clients a lot of money for. This is a way of us giving back. Uh, and there's a common theme to all of this, what I'm talking about tonight, which I'm gonna get to at the end. Uh, so make sure you stick around. 
So, cash flow. Um, cash flow is done. Now, the thing we need to be mindful of is in absence of the structure, the battle now get, relies 90% on your behavior. So you ultimately need to make sure you have that structure, otherwise you are competing against yourself. There are people out there like my business partner, Sam, uh, who uh, squirrel away uh, every last dollar and are extremely good savers, uh, although I'm very envious uh, of those behaviours. Uh, for the majority of us, the two out of three who stuff that marshmallow straight into our mouths, uh, we are not like that. So we need to be mindful that we need to set up the right structure that allows you to protect yourself from yourself. So this is very, very important. Now, next segue. The obstacle is the way. Uh, I haven't seen any questions yet, so come on guys. Uh, hit me with some questions, hit me with some comments, hit me with some love. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lonely here. I'm sitting in the office, it's, uh, it's cold. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to share value. Come on guys. Um, in any case, um, the obstacle is the way. This is a concept that I've, uh, and I guess a, a statement that I find myself uh, coming back to a lot lately. Uh, there was ultimately, uh, I guess, a, a, uh, a, uh, a book that I read uh, a while back that, uh, that really, I guess, resonated with me. Uh, and it was, a, I guess, a, a really good metaphor for, uh, for, for my life. Um, when uh, I, I come from very humble beginnings, my parents were blue collar, uh, were blue -collar workers uh, my, uh, and ultimately struggled a lot with money. Um, there was no handouts. Uh, there was no silver spoons. Uh, everything was done the hard way. And uh, ultimately, uh, that led me to have, I guess, some level of resentment to, to money, uh, to, to wealth, and to those of, that, that had it. Um, and I guess for a lot of people, and this, is, this has been a, a common theme through their lives, um, they struggle, they have a resentment for money, they have a, a negative relationship with money, and ultimately, this leads them down a very dark path. Now, one of my mentors once told me, that the situations that you learn to survive, your survival ultimately depends upon. So what we do is we tend to condition ourselves to get to a point where we, uh, we, we essentially get ourselves back into these bad situations because we've lived them before. And ultimately what we need to realize is that the obstacle is the way. We, it's no coincidence that we start a business, we come up with an idea, we dive into uh, a, 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 an ambition of ours, only to get beaten down by life, have obstacles thrown in our way, and we reach this defining moment where we either say, this is too hard and I'm gonna quit and go back to the easy way, or I'm going to persevere and see what happens. Now in my life, uh, we've gone through a, a lot of, uh, of, of hard times, um, even in business. Um, Sam's been sick, uh, Sal's sick today, um, and uh, we've, we've really had to try and band together and work together as a team to keep things moving forwards. And in spite of all of the adversity, we've been able to prevail and continue to keep things growing. So it's one of those things that by having that experience and about having that frame of always chasing the obstacle, uh, in order to overcome it, it's allowed us to, I guess, have that perseverance to be able to achieve uh, our goals, achieve our ambitions, and continue to push ourselves out of our comfort zone in pursuit of greatness. Because we want to make a significant difference in this world. And this comes down to aligning with your purpose. If you're aligned with your purpose, if you love what you do, if you're passionate about what you do, and you're willing to give back, then the world will give back in return. And this is the whole premise of why we do these live events, uh, why we give away a ton of free value, because if we keep it all to ourselves, then what, what does that say about us? If we're making sure that every little piece of intellectual property that we've created, all of the expertise that we've built over these years is only for our paying clients, then that doesn't really set a good precedent for the, the, the way that we live our lives, the way that we run our business and the way that we're represented in the world. So uh, we've got a couple of questions here. Um, I'm going to uh, digress a little bit. I'll come back. Uh, so Rando, uh, thanks for joining us, mate. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, so question is, how do credit cards come into play with your income and outgoings model? Great question. Um, credit cards have no role. Uh, and uh, this is something that I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, I believe that these days it is so easy to spend money and it is so hard to get transparency around how you're spending because everything is digital. Uh, back in the day, uh, I'm sure 
your, your grandparents uh, would have gone to got, get their paycheck. They cashed it into the bank. They would have typically gone and got their cash and put it into a series of envelopes. And essentially, they only took money out as they needed it. And it was this old way of doing things that ultimately allowed them to have a very good control of their money. They knew exactly what they had. Now, these days, most people have no idea and credit cards make it even worse. With all of these uh, point schemes and all of these incentives and bonuses, um, they convolute the basic um, structure of cash flow. It is money in and money out. So how are we supposed to know what money is ours when we're trying to work out how much money is the banks, when's our interest-free period end, when have we got to pay it back, how many points have I actually got, what does that get me? Um, and this ultimately comes down to the amount of decisions that you can actually make on a daily basis that are adding value to your life. So I always say for my clients, work with real money, create an emergency fund in what we refer to as your hub account. We'll be diving to, into this in a lot of detail in our education series around this and be able to create an emergency fund that becomes your own credit card, meaning that you can tap your debit card with peace of mind, knowing there's always going to be money there. Um, other than that, the points are a, a bunch of crap, to be honest. Um, they're so uh, low in value as a percentage of your spending. You've got to realize that banks don't give away things for free. They're doing it because they know that more often than not, most people are going to be drawn in by the, uh, the I guess, the, the excitement of the points and the potential that uh, they, may, they may create uh, and ultimately end up going past the interest-free period and racking up far more interest than what the bank's going to spend on the points distribution uh, anyway. So I always advocate you shouldn't have a, uh, shouldn't have a credit card. Um, if you do have a credit card, it's for emerge. This is a strategy I picked up from, from my business partner, Sam. Sam only uses a credit card uh, when he goes overseas. Uh, and this is something that I learned the hard way. Uh, I went to Thailand a number of years ago and got my card skimmed. It was a debit card. And it took me eight weeks to get my money back. Uh, however, if it was a credit card, they would have just cancelled the credit card and waived the expense. So when it comes to playing with your own money and if you're overseas from a risk management standpoint, I save the money in a, my own holiday account with a, a maximum limit of what I'm going to spend on that holiday. I have my credit card and I only spend up to whatever I've already got in cash and I use that credit card while I'm, on, on, uh, while I'm away. And then when I get back, I transfer the money and clear the credit card. So that is the only uh, strategy that I use a credit card for. Um, so hopefully that's of value. Uh, any other questions, guys, feel free to, to post them up and happy to, to share some insights. Um, now, I think that uh, all of you who are, uh, have encountered adversity in your life, uh, all of you who have uh, encountered obstacles, um, I do advocate that you go and check out that book by Ryan Hol uh, Holiday called The Obstacle is the Way. Um, we need to look for inspiration uh, and, and I guess uh, things that drive us to reach our fullest potential in life. And it's uh, things like this, books like this, uh, inspirational people around us that ultimately lead us to pursuing our, our fullest potential. Um, and, and an analogy that uh, from uh, actually a guest on the podcast uh, a, a couple of weeks ago uh, shared with us is that um, ultimately we always have a little bit left in the tank. Um, and uh, if, if I ask you guys to, to get, grab your fist and squeeze your hand as hard as you possibly can. Now, once you've done that, squeeze a little bit harder. You can always squeeze a little bit harder, right? Because there's always that little bit left in the tank. And uh, ultimately, it's that little bit left in the tank that allows us to push through that barrier, overcome the obstacle and achieve our fullest potential. And it's being able to, to get this inspiration, that little bit of a push, that allows us to achieve, uh, achieve that level that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to achieve. So hopefully that's of value. Now, a couple of big announcements. Um, we're not gonna go the full hour tonight, so I don't wanna uh, bore you with uh, a ton of content. Um, we've been really excited uh, about an initiative that we've recently launched in our business. Um, and as you all know, who've been following our journey, um, we're very vocal and very open about how we run our business, what we do, uh, and essentially our, our vision for what we're trying to create. And uh, we've been looking for a, a long time, uh, or since we started, it was in our business plan originally to get to a point where we started a charitable foundation ourselves, where we had the ability to contribute back 
to financial literacy and uh, wealth education programs for children from, uh, from K to 12. But we understood that this was going to be a very expensive exercise. It was probably going to take us a few years to get to a point where we could do it. And uh, we were looking for an opportunity to partner with, a, 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 I guess, a purposeful organisation that was making a real impact in the world. Now, Sam and I went to a, a workshop uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, at that workshop, we, uh, we met with a really inspiring uh, guy who was presenting by the name of Paul Dunn. And Paul Dunn is the chairman of an organization called Buy One, Give One. And basically, Buy One, Give One allows businesses to be able to align with purposes or, or with projects around the entire world. And based on certain things that happen in their business, be able to contribute to these causes and make a meaningful impact. Now, over the, the course of, I think, the last decade that Buy One, Give One has been around, uh, they've made uh, hundreds of millions of contributions to projects around the entire world, uh, and we were really, really excited to, to partner with them. So we've, uh, we've essentially uh, got, gone into partnership with Buy One, Give One, and we're really, really excited to start trying to create uh, projects and causes that align with our values in business and be able to give back uh, to people who are in need. Uh, whether it be uh, field, uh, feeding children in third world countries, uh, being able to help people get uh, business education, uh, being able to contribute to, uh, to children being educated, whatever it may be, uh, we're going to be defining these projects and announcing how we contribute back. So we're really excited. This is another thing we're going to announce in the community over the coming weeks. Uh, and look, ultimately, we're here uh, to hopefully have a meaningful impact in the world. Uh, so we want you guys to get excited about this stuff too. Uh, we want you guys to share your ideas uh, and we want to try and work uh, with our community, uh, with the people who engage in our content uh, to make a difference. So uh, it's going to be uh, pretty cool. Now, uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is that we've been working pretty hard over the past few months to build a wealth mini course, uh, which is helping teach people the fundamentals, the basics. Uh, this is going to be launching shortly, uh, and it's basically five-day video series that gets delivered to your inbox every single morning, and it should take about 10 or 15 minutes for you to go through the video, complete the exercise, and start taking action. We've tried to keep this real simple, and we've tried to learn from all of these other educators that are out there that are just making it so complicated and only giving people a very small piece of the puzzle. And uh, we really want to try and help you guys take action in pursuit of your goals and crafting your dream life. So if you are interested, if you're watching this live, uh, if you are watching this once we go offline, uh, please feel free to comment and uh, let us know that you would be interested or reach out to us via our private message. And we will put you on the list as soon as it launches. Uh, so if this is something that's of interest, it's free, it's there to add value uh, and hopefully help you guys uh, implement some of the stuff that we talk about and learn the exact steps that we take our private clients through when it comes to doing this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So we hope this is of value. Uh, I've tried my very best uh, to keep this live event afloat and I think I've done pretty well uh, for, uh, for 40 minutes. So uh, I uh, I'm, uh, I'm, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we will hopefully have another person supporting me next week. Uh, otherwise, I'll be uh, rambling on uh, for, uh, for 40 minutes again. Uh, but I really appreciate your feedback. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please like and share. Uh, and also make sure that you do join the Wealth Mentor community uh, to get more value uh, in our content. And please invite your family, friends, and colleagues into the community as well. We're going to grow this thing together. Uh, we want to try and help more people work towards financial freedom. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we can't do that alone. So uh, until next time, uh, we will catch you next time, uh, same time, and next week for our Ask or Is Anything Live Q&A. Uh, thanks for joining, and we will catch you later.